Today's video is extremely important. You know TradingView has these inbuilt screeners, where you can choose various default criteria and have a bunch of stocks screened. But, this screener is not flexible at all. For example, the exponential moving average criteria have some default lengths, like 5, 10, 50, 200, etc. If I wanted to have a customized length of my own choice, then that option is not available here. Also, we cannot use our own custom-made indicators as scanning criteria here. Overall, this screener is very rigid. But today, I have found a hidden gem. There is a Pine Script screener that runs on the customized indicators as well. And also, you can apply this screener on your own custom watch list. What else do we need? But the screener is so well hidden inside the trading view that you may almost never find it. Don't worry. I found it after hours of searching. This is the link to that screener. Open this link in a web browser where you have logged into the trading view. Such a page will open. This is the Pine screener I was talking about. Here, you can select the watch list on which you want to apply the screener. And from here, you can select your very own custom indicator. This indicator will be used as the screening criteria. But, it is not as simple as it seems. There are tons of rules to follow. First of all, let me give you a demonstration. I have created a simple indicator. Here, we have a 50 exponential moving average. I have plotted that moving average and given it a title. Giving some title is very important. Then, I have plotted the close value. Also, given some title to it. Now, the first rule is that whichever criteria you want to use from this indicator, must be plotted in this way. So I want to use this exponential moving average and the close value of the current candle as the screening criteria, that is why I have plotted them. Remember, only those elements that are plotted on the chart will be used in the screener. And make a note that, here, I have not used any conditional logic in the code itself. For example, I have not coded if the price close is above the EMA, or below the EMA, or something like that. All the conditional logic will be done in the screener itself. Later I will show how to use the conditional logic as well. Okay. The second and very important step is to make this indicator a favorite. Only the favorite indicators can be used in this Pine screener. To make the indicator favorite, go to this indicator section. Search your indicator. And click this star button. OK, now the indicator is ready. Now go back to that web page where the screener is open. Refresh this page once. Now, select any watch list that you want. I am selecting the Nifty 50 watch list. And in the indicators list, I am going to select the moving average indicator that we just created. Here, I am going to select the time frame upon which this screener will work. I'm selecting a daily time frame. Okay, now see here. Here we see two things close value, and, 50 EMA. These are the two things that we have plotted in our indicator. These are the titles that we had written. Select the close value option. Click the manual setup option. Here, I am going to select the, above, option. Here, I am going to select the, 50 EMA, option. So we are looking for those stocks where the close value of a candle is above the 50 EMA. Click Apply. As of now, 57 stocks are present on our watch list. Now, click this Scan button. There you go. The screener has worked, and, it has filtered these 10 stocks for us. All these stocks are those where the current candle close is above the 50 EMA, on the daily time frame. Let's open one of these stock charts. As you can see, I am on the daily chart of Infosys. 
And here, the current candle is above 50 EMA. Similarly, you can open a chart of any of these stocks, and you will find the same output. What about this 50 EMA option here? Nothing. We don't need it anymore. Just click it. And select the remove option. OK. So as of now, we have just plotted things in code, and, we have not used any conditional logic in the code itself. We did conditional operations in the screener window. By conditional operations I mean, having the condition that the price close should be above the EMA, or below the EMA, or something like that. So now let's see how to code such conditions in the Pine script code itself, and then, how to use that condition in the screener. So now, I have not plotted the close value and the EMA. We don't need to plot them anymore. Then here, I have a variable called is price above the EMA. Here I have written the logic that the close value of the bar should be above the EMA. And here, I have a variable called is price below the EMA. Here I have written the logic that the close value of the bar should be below the EMA. And finally, I have plotted these two variables, and given them titles, above EMA, and, below EMA. Now, the code is ready. Let's go back to the screener. Here first, I have selected a watch list that I want to screen upon. And then from here, I will choose my indicator. The time frame is daily. So now, we get these screening options. One is above EMA and one is below EMA. Let's use the above EMA option. Click it. Click manual setup option. Here, choose the equal option. Keep the value option as it is. And here, type one. So now this screener will give us those stocks where the above EMA condition is equal to one. Click the scan button. And there you go. In all these stocks, on the daily time frame, the current bar close value is above the EMA. Let's open some stock and check. I have plotted the old version of the indicator where we could see the EMA and the close value plotted. This will help us in testing. And that's the proof. See, this is the EMA. And the current price close is above the EMA. The same thing can be done with the below EMA condition. See, it has given us 47 stocks, where the current price is below the EMA. Now, a few important points to be noted. From this indicators list, we can only select one indicator at a time. The screener works on these default time frames only. If your indicator contains any request.security function, and, if you are trying to access the data from some custom time frame which is not listed here, then, that indicator cannot be used in this screener. So security functions in your indicator need to use only these time frames. Now, the final and most important point to be noted is that, this screener is only available to those TradingView users who have premium or higher subscriptions to the TradingView. So if you have a premium TradingView account, go have fun. I hope this video helps you. Thanks for watching.